Holiday shopping and the parties are here. But so is anxiety, stress, and depression. How to know if someone is struggling with mental health during this hectic time? And if you or a loved one has chosen the path of sobriety, we have some tips on how to cope with the holidays. Later, I will tell you how you can make a difference this holiday season in helping victims of modern-day slavery, also known as human trafficking. From charities to soulful gift ideas, the holiday edition of the Wellness Newscast starts right now. The holiday season is here, a time for reflection, compassion, forgiveness, gatherings, and tons of yummy food, but not for all. This season can bring feelings of sadness, loneliness, anxiety, and much more. Unfortunately, these symptoms turn people into more alcohol or drugs at times. Let's not ignore the signs. So how about if we get started addressing mental well-being around the holiday season? Hectic holiday schedules, family members' opinions, money worries, or simply missing a loved one during this time can be enough for people to be edgy or worse yet, seek more alcohol or drugs to numb themselves. Now imagine someone that is already on medication for a mental disorder or who is suffering from a loss. I turn to someone I trust for answers, a psychologist from California, Dr. Susana Salgado, and I begin by asking, how can we tell if one of our loved ones are struggling with mental health? Holidays, one of the major ingredients are family get-togethers. And so for a lot of individuals coming together with their families, it can bring up a lot of unresolved emotions, unresolved feelings, particularly if there was like some traumas that, that they experienced in their families, that's going to come up during this time. Um, sometimes the idea of being together with a lot of people whom they haven't seen in a long time, like that can bring up a lot of distress, right. especially there's a lot of differences. Um, right now, during this pandemic, there's been a lot of conversations about vaccines, values, politics, a lot of social unrest due to some racial yeah. tensions. And so those yes. conversations get really difficult, particularly when we bring a family together um, of people who maybe don't see each other on a consistent basis. Um, so I would say one of the first things to keep in mind is if you have a family member who already struggles with some uh, mental health issues of some sort, you want to just notice um, changes. Now I'm going to make a, I'm going to list off a couple of different things, but please know that you have to know who your loved one is, right? So for example, um, one of them, one of the sort of the telltales are changes in their personal appearance. This might mean changes in their hygiene. This might mean you see that they're not taking care of themselves, they're not combing and grooming their, their, their hair. Um, you might see that and notice that they're maybe not showering or bathing or cleansing as often or regularly. Um, you might notice um, really quick changes in their weight. Maybe mm. all of a sudden they gain really mm. rapidly gain a lot of weight or they lose a lot of weight um, or they just stop taking care of themselves. Now, if it's someone who already struggles with mental health issues and that's something that they already experience on a day to day basis, those changes might not be as noticeable. Right. Um, but again, you want to just pay attention to those subtle changes in the person. Um, you have to know the person first and foremost. I think the second thing is noticing uh, any big major emotional outbursts or mood changes. For a lot of individuals um, you know, who are already struggling with some mental health issues, maybe they might appear a little bit more moody or a little bit more anxious in general. But during the holidays, if you notice that there's maybe more of um, a big reaction, right, to maybe something really small, maybe to a meal not being prepared well, or maybe major outbursts of frustration or anger or outbursts of sadness and like excessive crying when it appears that it doesn't quite match the situation, that's a really good telltale sign. Wow. And, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I want to bring up now those people that... Um, kind of withdrew during COVID and, and even those that didn't, but feel lonely inside and suffer from anxiety and depression uh, on a normal location. It, it only gets worse during the holidays, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because for a lot of individuals, you know, again, like the, it's sometimes it's even the anticipatory stress, right? Mm -hmm. It's the idea that they have to get together and see people. And for a lot of us, um, especially for those of us that were engaging in like quarantine and social distancing, um, for a lot of people, 
seeing their family for the first time after two years or after like maybe a year and a half is a really big deal. So maybe there's more of a tendency to withdraw and isolate. And I appreciate you saying that because that's actually another sign um, that an individual is really struggling. When you notice that an individual is withdrawing, isolating more than usual, maybe they stop connecting with their family, with their friends, like the people that they normally see, they stop responding to text messages, they disengage from their social media, they stop taking phone calls. Those are really good telltale signs that they're disengaging, they're disconnecting a little bit more than usual. Super interesting and so, so true. I, I am going to have my, I, you, as you're speaking, I'm thinking of so many family members that now I'm going to be hyper aware. Um, and that brings me to uh, our, our Generation Z, our kids, those 22 year olds and younger that, you know, um, are bringing up the topic of mental health on the daily. And yeah. this they're it's keeping us on our toes. <laughs> <laughs> this is no exception for them. And it's going to be a stressful time because we all experience some level of a stress during the holidays for some of the, the majority of the reasons you just mentioned. How can we help our kids? You know, I, I think children, adolescents, and young adults have slightly different stressors, right? So I'm, I'm going to start with the little ones for just a second, because I think the little ones oftentimes get ignored. Um, and part of it is because we're so focused on getting them the gifts. We're so focused on making it pretty for them. But we don't realize that sometimes it's overstimulation during the holidays. So I, I would say this is true for the little ones, as well as adolescents and some young adults. Uh, first and foremost, I think we need to create the space to talk with them. We need to find out, you know, what what are your needs? Um, what what are your expectations for the holidays? Particularly if we had some major changes in our family due to this pandemic. Um, for a lot of individuals um, and for a lot of families, people are still not going to get together um, yeah. during during this holiday yeah. season That's this true. year. Um, because for some of us, you know, who have younger children, there still isn't a vaccine. It might not feel safe yet. Um, we might not want to travel with our with our young ones. And so they might not see family that they normally would see during the holidays. Um, for others, they might be missing a loved one that recently passed away. As we know, the, the mm -hmm. pandemic, you know, triggered a lot of losses. So mm -hmm. for many of us, this will be the first year, the first holiday season that we will have without that loved one. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we talk about that with our with our children, our teenagers and our young, you know, generations years like 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 we need to talk with them. Right. Because and create space. about what does that look like? Um, what what are you what are you feeling right now as we're approaching the holidays? And that I, I really want to stress this piece, which is. We want to listen to them. We want to validate their feelings, even if there's nothing we can do. And I think as parents and adults of individuals who are younger, we sometimes want to fix things, right? Or we want things to go away. Um, we, we don't want to acknowledge something if we feel helpless, yeah. if we can't actually change it. Yeah. And so I, I really want to invite us to take a moment and simply reflect that. Sometimes it's about listening, it's about validating, creating space, and then finding out what would they like to do to honor the holiday season. Um, maybe they want to come up with their own traditions. Maybe they want to honor that loved one. Um, maybe they want to actually Zoom in their family, you know, who they, they're not going to get together with during that time. Um, for, you know, for the young adults, um, I think it's also really important that we highlight that, you know, we need to give them space. Um, they're young adults, uh, especially, you know, I would think anywhere between 15 and 25 year olds. Um, autonomy is really important during that time of our lives, yeah. right? So we want to give them space too. you know, we're so wanting to have family time and get together. Yeah. And that's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but again, it's, sometimes it's overstimulation, right? So yeah. we want to give them space to sit back and maybe do a little bit of what they normally do. We that's also... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. And we also want to balance, you know, creating activities um, that they might enjoy that are non-holiday like. Right. So going on walks together, dancing together, doing things that you normally would do, which leads me to the third thing, if I might add. Yes. Um, which is, you know, it is important to keep some semblance of a routine. 
It doesn't have to be the same routine that you keep on a daily basis, but you want to, you want to honor some type of routine. Maybe it's the morning routine. Maybe it's the evening routine. That's important because it allows us to contain that anxiety, that like restlessness, that feelings of the, oh my gosh, what is this going to look like today? You know, especially when we have all this free time. So I think that routine is really important for everyone, um, but particularly for kids, adolescents, and young adults. Dr. Susana Salgado, I love talking, speaking with you. I love um, all of your advice. I could sit here and talk to you for hours. I <laughs> thank you for um, joining me to be able to spread the word and and help people prepare for the holidays emotionally, mentally, um, so we can have an easier ride. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Salgado. I appreciate such valuable insight. Now, how about those that have chosen sobriety? The holidays must not be easy for them either. For some tips, I turn to Tom Freeman. He has been sober for six years, and I ask him how he copes with sobriety around the holidays. Well, the holidays can be a stressful time for just about everyone. Um, In fact, I don't know many people that don't get a little keyed up around this time of the year. Then when you throw in the fact that some people like myself who have sobriety, um, it could be I'm 30 days of sober, sober, um, I have 30 years of sobriety. It it doesn't much matter. Um, The holidays just bring a little something extra and what I've done in my six years of sobriety and others have shared with me, taught me with me, worked with me on is making sure that you're prepared. Now, preparation for me is number one, I want to make sure that I've got my tribe. I have to have my tribe. My tribe is going to be my higher power, those that are in sobriety with me and those loved ones that see me, know me, know my story, know what I'm going through. Each and every year that I've gone through my journey of sobriety, it's gotten a little bit easier. And it's gotten easier because I'm more prepared for it. I'm just more prepared. So what do I do? I make sure that I attend meetings. I may not attend meetings every day. Um, Some people, this is what they want to do. Um, I just make sure that when I feel any urge coming on, I drop into a meeting. Meetings are always available to you. And so that preparation right there allows me to be able to walk into any environment because I know I have my tribe. I know they're just a phone call away. I know that I could just reach out and grab any of them. Some of them might be right alongside me on this journey through the holidays. The second part, just as important as being prepared, is you have to have an exit strategy. That exit strategy is super important. I remember in the beginning of my sobriety, I was always the last person to arrive to a party and the first person to leave. Now I can arrive earlier. Now I can uh, hang on a little bit later and I don't white knuckle it anymore. But I will get to that situation, that situation where I may walk into a kitchen full of people and everyone's got filling up their wine glasses and they're ready to do a big toast. What do I do? I jump right in the middle, stick my hand out, give a high five to everyone, crack a joke, jump right in the middle of it. No one even notices that I don't have a glass in my hand. So if I ever get to that uncomfortable situation, I'm absolutely going to 86 myself from it. I don't have to leave the home. I don't have to leave the party anymore. I just need to leave where I was at that moment. So preparation, have your tribe, have a plan, work your program. Second part, make sure you have an exit strategy. I wish everyone a happy holidays. Thank you, Tom. If you need support for yourself or a loved one, here are some organizations where you can find support. Fortunately, holidays also bring out the best in people, a time where we're inspired to help others. But I want to propose to you that before we can help others, we have to support ourselves. So how do we keep our cup full so we can show up and be fully present, displaying the best version of ourselves? For this question, I turn to Self Love with Leticia, an organization that focuses on just that, self-care. Leticia shares with us the importance of morning rituals. 
for me, it is so important to have a morning ritual every single day, whether that's, you know, a work day, my rest day, my day off, even my traveling day. It, no, it doesn't matter. My morning ritual comes with me because I've turned it into a lifestyle. It's not just something I do here and there or when I have time. Um, you know, the, the idea is that time is illusional. Time is, is we've set time to be what it is, this 24 hour day, but time goes on and on. Mm -hmm. And so it's not about time management. It's about self-management and making a morning ritual, your priority, setting aside time for yourself to do something that will fill your cup in the morning, whatever that is for you. It could literally be filling a cup with good coffee or tea and just sitting down and actually enjoying it instead of heading off and, and doing a task. Um, I also recommend not jumping on our phones and, and scrolling and seeing what the world is already doing before you're actually connecting with how you're doing. How are you feeling? Did you wake up in a good mood? Are you are you carrying something from the day before that maybe you need to, you know, work on a little bit more so you can have a better day as you go into it? Um, so there's so much of that, right? Not turning on the news or the TV, you know, doing activities that really focus on seeing how you're doing, because it honestly just sets the pace for the day when we take time for ourselves to journal a bit or meditate, or again, just sit there and enjoy that cup of coffee, looking out, you know, out the window and enjoying a scenery can really just kind of give you um, more clarity. And again, like I said, sets the pace for the day versus when we wake up, jump and check our emails, jump on the phone, go out the door, handle everyone else's business. And we're still trying to catch up with ourselves. Um, unfortunately, we usually play catch up all day long, even yeah. into the nighttime, which again, you know, gives us, you know, anxiety and worries and all the thoughts as we're trying to go to bed. Um, and then it just goes back into the day and we do it all over again. Thank you, Leticia. Now from taking care of ourselves to helping others. The holidays are also a time where we look for meaningful ways to give back. The reason I want to put the spotlight on an organization that is doing so much to assist victims of human trafficking, which is basically modern day slavery. I spoke with Amy Marie Merrill from the Cupcake Girls. Here's more on their amazing work. So the Cupcake Girls works to provide community education and outreach as well as intensive case management, holistic resources, and referral services for the prevention and aftercare of those affected by sex trafficking. Uh, many times the clients are experiencing crisis or leaving an unsafe situation, and the Cupcake Girls work to provide confidential support, intensive case management, and resources to people because we want to make sure that they're able to access their goals and their timing. So we're offering a non-judgmental assistance and empowering our clients toward the achievement of their goals with respect, resources, and relationships. That's really awesome that you said non-judgmental assistance mm -hmm. because this is such a sensitive subject and where lives are at risk and mm -hmm. they're scared to even come out and, and say, I need help. Yeah. So it is... I cannot stress it enough. And I love that that is the kind of support that you are providing. And would you tell people that are listening, that are watching this and listening, um, what if they're professionals and can provide a service to help pro bono with you? How, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. So the the way that we work at the Cupcake Girls is actually we partner with doctors, dentists, lawyers, auto mechanics, child care providers, the list goes on. But our clients will come to us and they're saying, I'm in need of a service. And then we go out into the community and we try to reach out to different professionals that would be willing to donate their professional services either pro bono or at a very discounted rate for our clients. A lot of our clients have a lot of trauma with going to different professionals. And, and so them being vetted by us first and us being able to have a conversation with the professional and make sure that they understand the trauma that our clients yeah. have faced so that they can have um, ease, ease in, in that experience and that exchange is really important to us. Uh, and so I would love any professionals, if you are willing to donate your services, please reach out to us. We, we'd love to connect with you. And that's so important that you said that uh, you are that link because it's important to educate those people out there that are willing to help, but they just don't know how. Right. They don't know what to look for. They don't right. know what 
what a victim of human trafficking looks like or right. feels like. So it's so important that you're that link to create the connection, to have that conversation ahead of time with the provider and with your clients. So that's very cool. Um, so, you know, the holidays are here pretty much and people are willing to donate to their favorite charities. And I would like you to be put on the spotlight for your organization to receive donations because your mission oh, you. is big. And it's part of, like, like I said earlier, of a bigger global problem because human trafficking is not just sex trafficking, it's labor trafficking and it's everywhere. It's, it's three doors down from your house. You never know who's a victim because yeah. on top of everything, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the victims from human trafficking, they don't identify themselves that they're human trafficking victims. That's they right. May they may have a domestic violence situation or there may be some other situations, but they don't consider themselves human trafficking victims. So that's right. It's already a, a, a hard task to get them to that point to say, okay, I do need the help. Right. And then once they're with you, then to really open up to be to be open to receive the services that you're that you can connect them with so they can get in a safer place. Absolutely. We have clients that will be sitting with us in three or four of our client meetings and they still um, are unable to recognize that they're in a trafficking situation. So I'm really glad that you highlighted that. And, and thank you so much for highlighting us for financial support. That's incredibly generous. And I really appreciate you. Uh, yeah, the the finance the financial piece is is huge, especially heading into the holiday season. We're seeing a lot of people who are needing a lot, and so something that we're doing as an organization is we're loving locally. We have this this program called Love Local, where our clients will be able to reach out and be able to access um, micro grants, small amounts of money, so that they're able to provide food and and shelter, pay their utilities, pay their rent, oh, make wow. sure that their families have have space during the holiday season. So we're going to be um, sending out over $10,000 to our clients. And we can only do that with the public's help. Uh, and so anything that is donated to us would be directly donated to our clients and then given out to them so that they have extra support this holiday season. What a great way to pay it forward. If someone out there is listening to this and watching us, you know, if you're looking for an organization, this is it, because I know that every penny that goes donated to this organization gets put out in the community. So uh, if you can do it, I'm going to be putting the information on your screen so you can you know where to call or where to email with all the information, whether you want to donate or whether you want to be a partner. Do you have volunteer opportunities? Absolutely. We're always looking for folks who would be willing to donate their time. And, and we have volunteer orientations every single month. So if, you, if you'd like to be a volunteer, we have plenty of opportunities for you. That's amazing. And you know what? This is the time to be jolly, the time to, to get together as a community, uh, as a country, as a as yeah. planet, right? Because again, this is a bigger problem. But I, I just want to say we have... Um, Human trap in the United States. For those watching outside of the United States, this is uh, the month of January in the United States is um, Human Trafficking Awareness Month. That's so, right. what a better way to end 2021 with yep. supporting an organization that's doing such amazing work for such an important cause, and then start the year with the awareness that human trafficking is real in your backyard, and let's get together to start an amazing 2022 with resources and support for all of this uh, area segment of our population that's very vulnerable. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Amy, for being Thank here. Thank you. Thank you for using your platform to spread good yes. and, and to make sure that folks can be given the opportunity for assistance. You are amazing. From donating to Christmas shopping, whether you're going from store to store or you prefer the comfort of your computer, have you thought of soulful gifts? Oh, well, I have, and I want to show you this. I truly believe in the power of this heated chakra mat. I use it with all of my clients. When heated, these gemstones emit a unique frequency that pairs up with each of our inner chakras.
bringing balance and clarity to your mental and emotional states. On a physical level, the heat from the gemstones relieves discomfort and tension in your muscles, joints, and tissues. The heat elevates your local blood circulation and relaxes you in a way that helps you free your mind from any worries. Chakras dictate everything. If one chakra is out of line, your whole life can be impacted. And I would not want that for you. Therefore, I have arranged for my clients and viewers to get a 10% discount by going to the website on your screen and entering the promo code ARLENEINSPIRES10. Make sure you do it at checkout. Do you have children? Well, I have you covered too. And for this, I had some coffee with the founder of Quentals. Check out the gift that keeps on giving for generations to come. And here we are, I'm having some coffee with an old friend. Hello, Welcome, you. Monica. Monica is the founder of Quentals.com. Monica, tell us all about it. Thank you, Arlene. Well, Quentals is a platform, it's mm -hmm. a bilingual yes. platform that is offering short stories for all generations in multicultural, because it's around the world. We mm -hmm. have um, helping each other with all writers, illustrators, animators, nice. voiceovers, all people around the world is joining to this platform and forming these amazing stories that we're sharing with all generations. And this is multilingual and yes. you have them collaborating, doing voiceovers, doing the illustrations. Yes. And so there you have it. If you have kids at home that want to learn another language, this is a great way to go about it. Yes. The holidays are around the corner. Oh yeah. So tell them, how can they subscribe yeah just visit www.quentels.com we're gonna see it the banner yes. here and please go and subscribe just invite another people friends family that join us and you know you have uh, stories around the world we have just right now a story that is uh, writing for a kid of 10 years old that he's from uruguay we change it here another boy from las vegas uh, do the voiceover in english wow, and we are so cool. in collaborating the illustrator and animation were made from ecuador so we're all around the country. We have stories that were made in China, that wow, were made in France. Wow, what an amazing England. way. It's, you know. What an amazing way to collaborate <laughs> yeah. and yeah. for such a meaningful cause to continue literacy in different languages. And this is a gift that you can keep on giving for generations to come. Yes. So important. Literacy and a second language. So you can learn more than a second Absolutely. language. Absolutely. Yeah. Put those kids with those paths and texting, put them and to the read yeah. some amazing books and learn another language. That is yeah. such a fantastic way to do it. Thank you very much for this opportunity. You know, the invitation is made. Yeah. Just visit www.quentals.com. And there you have it. Yes. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. <laughs> The end of the year is a time when humanity tends to reflect and set new intentions. And culturally, there is a plethora of them. I wanted to share a spiritual practice that works for all religions or cultures. For that, I asked my dear colleague and friend, medium, Karen Crisco. Hi, Eileen. Thank you for having me. I absolutely love this topic on intentions. Intentions are something that are part of your path that can set you free into living a life filled with purpose, passion, and freedom. I would love to give you a few tips and an example on an intention to set you up for this new year. If you're creating an intention, we always want to be grateful for all that we've experienced in the past year and in our life and the growth that we've experienced, the different situations, that we experienced that curated a level of motivation and momentum in our journey. So here are a few simple techniques you can use. Take a look at all that you've been grateful for. What did you learn in the past year that did push you forward to grow? And I want you to write these all out in a journal or on a piece of paper. Next, take a look at what you want in the upcoming year to experience. What is it that you want? What do you see? What's your vision? And when you put these elements together, you can put a beautiful, simple intention together. Here's something that you can use for this new year. And again, it's just very simple and easy. 
Thank you for allowing me to experience this beautiful year with an abundance of growth, filling me up with passion and purpose. And I'm grateful for the year to come, the new experiences, the new relationships that will enter into my life. I'm grateful for this beautiful earth that we live on and the new and upcoming exciting opportunities that will be presented to me easily and effortlessly. Thank you for this beautiful intention that I choose to set free into the universe. I hope this supports you in setting your intentions up. And remember, you can make these intentions up at any time. Just be repetitive, use them every single day, because not only will it set you up for success, it will fill you up with so much gratitude, joy, and love. And that's what we love in this world. Connection, joy, love, passion, and freedom. Karen, beautiful. And that does it. Time to say until next time. May you have an abundance of patience, compassion, generosity for all for the rest of 2021. May 2022 be full of health, blessings, and prosperity in all areas of your life. Until next time. Mm -hmm.